Here at fire station number five, over 25 people from the San Marcos area wait for their turn to go bald. National Signing Day is one of the most exciting days in a college athlete's career. The Texas State football team begins spring practices this Friday. The Bobcats will have 14 practices and two scrimmages, all leading up to the maroon and gold spring game. The Texas State women's basketball team takes on Western Kentucky at 7 tonight. This marks the second to last home game for the Bobcats in the 2013-2014 season. Several city officials, including the San Marcos Fire Department, are rallying together to raise money and awareness for Waylon Malone. Malone was diagnosed with neuroblastoma at the age of two. He has gone through a series of treatments causing him to lose his hair multiple times. Malone's fight against cancer has prompted several San Marcos officials to shave their heads in his honor. San Marcos Fire Chief Les Stevens says it's a great cause and anyone can participate. We have some website information that I could share with you, uh, that you could share with your viewers. Um, that they can go and log on. The mayor created an online account. Uh, it, to us, it's not about whose name it's donated under. Uh, it's just a, a great cause. San Marcos Mayor Daniel Guerrero says a personal tie to the cause made it easy for him to shave his head. Uh, I myself, I'm a cancer survivor also. I'm actually coming up on 32 years of remission. And so when I was asked, would I be willing to you know, shave my head in support of Whalen, I said, absolutely. Cancer survivors Cheryl Pantermule and Renata Gannity say shaving their heads was a great way to show their support for Waylon. You know, for me it accomplishes a lot. It, it accomplishes a, a team a building f with the people I work with here at the city. It, it helps a, a little boy who needs a smile. Here at fire station number five, over 25 people from the San Marcos area wait for their turn to go bald. They hope that at the very least it will put a smile on Waylon's face. For Bobcat Update, I'm Sky Wallace. National Signing Day is one of the most exciting days in a college athlete's career. It's a day that brings new talent to programs like Texas State where there's hope of building upon last year's achievements. The Bobcats in 2013 earned bull eligibility for the first time ever. Talented players from all over the country have taken notice. Players like James Sherman of Montgomery, Alabama, and Stephen Eddings, a transfer from Jones County Community College in Mississippi. Students say they hope signing day has wrangled new players who will help the Bobcats be even more successful. Seeing which freshmen make an impact, because you know who the next uh, Tyler Jones is, who the next true freshman that comes up um, from this class that we just pulled in today, uh, or even to see the, the last year's class, the guys that come off red shirt, see who makes an impact early. Others say the student athletes will need some guidance both on and off the field. With only t six players being like, have a rating on ESPN, I think it's time for the coaches to coach up the other players um, to get their full potential and hopefully they can find like a hidden gem or something in there. 27 student athletes signed letters of intent to play for the Bobcats next season. Five of the athletes were ranked in the top 100 players in Houston. The 2014 season will begin at Bobcat Stadium on August 30th against Arkansas Pine Bluff. For Bobcat Update, I'm Sky Wallace. Survivors of the Boston Marathon bombing attack walked their way to a personal victory to mark the one-year anniversary. JP and Paul Norton triumphantly made their way down Boylston Street where they each lost a leg in the explosions from two homemade bombs a year ago. The brothers walked the full 26.2 miles of the marathon route with friends and family. They began their walk with a moment of silence. Two suspects have been arrested in connection with stealing more than $100,000 worth of fuel from gas stations in Austin and San Antonio. Alejandro Alvarez and Gildebaldo Puente have been charged with engaging in organized criminal activity. Investigators said Puente would use a screwdriver to pry the front panel of the pump open and then put his hand inside the pump to manipulate the gears. As many as nine vehicles would take turns filling up their tanks and gas tank containers with free gas. Police expect to identify and arrest more suspects in the case. 